Okay, the penultimate episode of the Orville for this season after this. Hello out there, I'm the oldest nerd, and in my first impressions of this episode of the Orville, I was thinking, no, not another retread of something we've already seen. And I was a little disappointed, especially at the outset, that this looked very much like the episode in The Next Generation, where Riker finds that he has a younger version of himself, or perhaps not a younger version of himself, but a, uh, a duplicate of himself that was caused by a transporter accident, where uh, the young uh, Lieutenant Riker is stranded on a planet. Enterprise discovers him, beams him aboard, and suddenly we have a Lieutenant Riker and a Commander Riker, one who has had all of the experience of the character that we know, and one who has been um, stuck as a lieutenant, abandoned on a planet. And we see the same kind of thing in this episode where uh, they go through some kind of anomaly in which uh, uh, Kelly is split into a younger version of herself seven years previous, uh, just before uh, she's met Ed, or just after she's met Ed and before they've had their second date. And so uh, this uh, gives some fairly uh, predictable things in the Next Generation episode, uh, Lieutenant Riker uh, tried to rekindle a relationship with Deanna Troy, who had moved beyond that and was not comfortable um, uh, going into a relationship with him when the Riker that she had gotten to know uh, as a commander uh, was kind of a different person. Uh, of course, by the end of the TNG episode, Riker, the lieutenant, decides just to call himself Thomas and gets himself reassigned to another ship. And he's brought back an episode or two later for other things. In this episode, however, uh, they manage to send the younger Kelly back to her own time. And the idea was planted in the beginning of the episode. Um, Ed Mercer says that he made a B-plus in temporal anomalies, and that was a good grade because nobody made an A in it because nobody really understood it. And he mentions the two different kinds of time travel theoretically possible, one where you create a different timeline and another where you uh, interrupt the progress of the current one. And it would be unable to tell from where they stand which one of these things happened. And with that caveat, with that warning at the very beginning of the episode, by near the end of it, where the younger Kelly says, the fact that you don't remember, she says to the older Kelly, the fact that you don't remember me means that we were able to get me back and with my erased mind, everything was able to go proper because this has already happened and you don't remember it because my mind is wiped. And so it made perfect sense, but it seemed like too easy an answer. And in fact, it was, and I have to give them kudos for realizing that that was too simple an answer so that when Kelly gets back, we know that the next morning, Ed was going to call her and ask her out for another date. Except in this timeline, she decides she doesn't want to go back out with him. Now, that means that the timeline has been disrupted and in the previews for the next episode, for the end of the season, uh, it is going to create some big complications. So what we see here is a bottle show in which it is setting the stage for the end episode. And it's going to play into this time anomaly and this um, disruption of the timeline that could have uh, very serious consequences on the Orville's present. So uh, at first, what I was ready to write off as just another retread episode, I think has some uh, very good possibility of leading into a truly memorable finale for this season of the Orville. So um, 
I'd like to know what you think about this. Uh, please let me know in the comments. Uh, also, don't forget to subscribe and join me next week when we have the exciting finale of The Orville. Until then, don't go far.